and then harness infinity. Uh oh! <laughs> Hello, good game. Welcome back, ghouls and goblins. I hope you're having a magical day. Thank you so much for taking the time to support the channel. We are in Alchemy Best of One with a Saltai deck. That's the color combination of blue, black, and green. This is a mid range slash combo deck. We'll be utilizing the Veteran Ghoul Caller. And whenever we pull a card out of our graveyard to our hand, we will conjure a duplicate and harness infinity, pulling our entire graveyard out at once with a nice mill package to get us going. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, that's okay. We're going to break down the deck list in its entirety throughout the video, talk about the strategies, the synergies, showcasing all of this in the gameplay footage, and then finally wrapping up with our final thoughts and new segment card of the day so don't forget to like the video to show your support subscribe to the channel for more great content just like this and let's take a look at the deck all right infinity caller is the name of the game this is very much a mid-range jank slash combo build we have a 60 card alchemy 2.9 average mana value 21 creatures to 16 non-creatures with 23 land as our build and like I mentioned, we're utilizing Veteran Ghoul Caller for two as one of the core cards here. It's a 2-1 with Menace, and whenever your card in your graveyard is put into your hand, conjure a duplicate of that card into your hand. This is really cool because not only will it bring double cards back, but it's a non-legendary that can be stacked for triple cards, quadruple cards, and, you know, just on and on, my friend. And we're even able to copy the Ghoul Caller with the wonderful Mirror Hall Mimic for four. When it enters the battlefield, copy a creature on the battlefield, except it's a spirit in addition to its other types, recasting it from the grave, which is cool because we're self-milling. It has Disturbed, which means we can play it from the grave for five. Enchant creature, and at the beginning of your upkeep, create a token that's a copy of Enchanted creature, except it's a spirit in addition to its other types. If it would be put uh, into the graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead. And this is fantastic because, you know, we go from having four ghoul callers to really having uh, an unlimited amount of ghoul callers in deck, which is really cool. And then we're using, uh, well, we might use Calling Ritual to wipe the field to generate mana, uh, potentially. But before we get there, let's talk about the rest of the synergy here. Harness Infinity for seven, instant speed, exchange your hand and graveyard, exile the infinity. Absolutely insane uh, if you're pulling multiple cards out from your grave. And like I said, you're conjuring a bunch of duplicates of them as well. We can ramp into Harness Affinity with Culling Ritual. And this is really cool because Culling Ritual sends all of our things to the grave. We generate mana for Infinity and the Ghoul Caller, right? Boom, play the Ghoul Caller, Infinity on top. All of those great creatures that we just sent to the grave for mana through the Ritual while wiping our opponent's side of the field as well. Now we're right back in hand which is really cool. Now you'll have a massive hand, so we'll have to use something like Wizard class. You have no maximum hand size. You also have this ability through Ren and Sevens minus eight, return all permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. You get an emblem with you have no maximum hand size, right? So there's a couple ways to achieve that, but don't worry, you know, you'll do just fine with seven cards in hand. You don't need 40 cards in hand, even though it's uh, more than possible here. And then there's a ton of mill. The Sprout, a one drop at the beginning of your upkeep, mill a card. If there's three or more creature cards in your graveyard, transform it into a 3-3. And at the beginning of your upkeep, you may exile a card from your graveyard. Probably don't do that with this build. However, it's up to the specific situation. And then if you do put a plus one, plus one counter on the Hulk, which is nice. We have the Castaway. When it dies, mill three cards. And then it comes back as the uh, Castigator. If it uh, enters the battlefield, you'll shuffle three cards from your graveyard to your library. If we mill Harness Infinity, that's a great way to get it back. We also have Balaged Recovery to get Harness Infinity back from a mill graveyard effect back into our hand, right? Really easy stuff there. Moving on, we have the Butler. When it enters, mill three. When it dies, if we want to exile it, we can return a creature card from our graveyard to our hand. This is going to, you know, potentially bring back the Ghoul Caller, right? Uh, we talked about this already. Uh, it's not milling any. And then we have old Rutstein as a mill. 1-4 for 3 when it enters the battlefield. Or at the beginning of your upkeep, mill a card. If a land card is milled this way, create a treasure. If a creature is milled this way, create a green insect. And if a non-creature is milled this way, create a blood token, which is really cool. All of these things can be used in conjunction with Calling Ritual for more mana generation. 
And uh, then Ren and Seven's plus ability, reveal the top four cards of your library, put all land cards into your hand, the rest into our graveyard. So this is a way to mill as well. Morgenkind doesn't mill, but he does draw, which is nice. Um, so those are the different mill effects. We can play the Blood Fountain. This is in the deck because it's a one drop that creates two permanents that are mana value two or less. It can also, uh, you know, be used to cycle that blood token away to find uh, Harness Infinity, which is really uh, quite nice as well. You can also return creature cards from your graveyard to your hand if you need those ghoul callers back. So a few ways to do that. Uh, more mill. I actually forgot about the Necro Genius. Whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks mill a card, we can pay four plus X to XL X creature cards from our graveyard, then transform it. X can't be zero, only at sorcery speed, into Ludwig's uh, Hubris. This creature, uh, as it transforms, it will become a copy of a creature that we exiled with it, except it has the same name, and it will be a 4-4. It's a legendary blue and black zombie in addition to its other types, and we get to put a number of 1-1 one, one counters on equal to the total amount of creatures that we exiled with it. So, you know, this is just a great way to continue milling, and then, you know, we've got a big fatty late game if we need through that X ability. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that's all the mill. Uh, things that we didn't talk about. Ramp through the innkeeper. This is nice for the life gain, right? We also get that treasure, which is really, really cool because it can be used uh, to cast Culling Ritual and it can be even, you know, generate mana through it either or. Both will work. And uh, yeah, so Mordenkainen has a couple other abilities. Draw two cards, put one from your hand in the bottom of your library. Create a dog and its power and toughness are equal to twice the number of cards in your hand, right? So, you know, get like 40 cards in your hand and then your dog is going to be like an 80-80 what what woof woof baby so that's really cool and then we can exchange our hand and library then shuffle you get an emblem with you have no maximum hand size uh so this is another way to get no maximum hand size emblem and it's a great way to uh take our massive hand put it into the library and just restart for fun if we want <laughs> you don't have to though um because our library will be lacking at a certain point and it will keep us from decking ourselves right that's the main thing that we would do it uh for that um that's every card in the deck that we talked about talked about there's uh pathways here there's the dual lands as well you could run the uh forgotten crossroads uh, that's another option as well for land consistency but it's not really a big issue um you know the innkeepers here there's no dual costs uh for the most part the hardest thing is infinity and then you know random sevens fine for that as well so uh the blues should not be played through the pathways the blues come in through the dual lands right both the cascade and the marsh will have blue within them and then you've got a couple basics here as well but typically the pathway is going to be a black source unless you already have three black sources once you have three black sources once you have three green sources do whatever you want with your land um but just try to focus on the Golgari side of the deck and then sprinkle in the blue little by little as it organically comes so i hope that uh, helps you guys perform well with this deck again you know just having a great time with it next up is the gameplay footage make sure to like comment subscribe to help support the channel and don't forget to watch to the end so you don't miss out on card of the day let's get into the gameplay on the draw mulliganing for better land and here we have it keep six toss infinity that's like a, a later on kind of thing right i don't want to mill it Yeah, we'll get it back later. Probably playing with uh, recovery and first tapped forest with the sprout glade with uh, rutstein and then kind of sitting on the ghoul collar for a bit. Maybe we'll keep. And we'll just, because we top decked a land here, so that kind of changes our plan on the fly. I'm going to keep this recovery. And I'll pull Harness out from the graveyard if we self-mill it on accident. Calling Ritual. If I mill Calling Ritual one more time, I'm going to cry. And they could also, with their gas, kill the Ghoul Caller here, which isn't great, but... You can't just sit on the sideline. Again, we could always bring it back. Even bringing back that calling ritual 
might not be the worst idea against this tokens deck. Okay, so they're gonna kill the ghoul caller here for sure. There's no way they don't. Yeah. Maybe should have killed the sprout, but I don't know. Oldy locks out. Smelling a land, getting that nice treasure, and we can wizard class here. No maximum hand size, not that it matters right now. We're sitting on two cards. Alright, we do a little milski. Another coloring ritual. You stop it. <laughs> Butler in play. We mill another three here. Hmm, could be better. No tax. And our turn. I like filling up the grave uh, as quickly as possible. Oh, you jerk. We lose our recovery. With a force discard. It happens. We'll get through it. So we transform. We do the mill. We make a blood token. We mill again. We get that land. This is a black source. We could have went blue and cast, uh, but I'd rather draw, because we don't want that blue for Harness Infinity. It's really important that we uh, get those six, three green, three blacks in play, right? Because this can be another blue within the dual lands. No attacks, chilling, playing defensively. Uh, if we need, we can toss the Mimic out for a draw. I'm kind of thinking that might be cool. And then just play it immediately for five. Right? Let's go ahead and do that. I like that play. We do get to draw here. Okay. Cast away. Could be worse. We get that mill. The land. We make a treasure to ramp. We get rid of their ghast. Ludvik is a go. I'm kind of worried about them wiping the field. I'm just going to sink in. But I guess if they're going to... We just pull back, right? So even them removing might not be the worst thing. We do mill here. Around seven, of course. Let's give them everything we've got. Let's... You know, they really... They want a nice blood on the snow. They don't want a weak... A weak blood on the snow. They really want to get some value here. We'll do our best to help him out. Um, I might swing in for four and see if they want to interact with some death touch. If we can clone the scorpion ourselves, we're bringing our like we want the death triggers basically, and then we're also drawing cards, which would be really good. So if we can get a hold of that fell stinger, uh, I wouldn't mind that. Down to three cards in hand. We have 33 in deck. They're at 47. So we're definitely doing our job correctly so far. We're sitting on six lands.
No harness infinity, so... I mean, we might even just take this damage. And then we can hit them harder. Unless they wipe the field here. And then, you know, that kind of sucks for us. But it's a, a bluff I'm willing to take. Yeah, it is. Okay. And who are they pulling back? The Connoisseur. We have nothing to discard. Right? We have no cards in hand anyways. Ghoul Caller. Uh, kind of sucks. But we will take action. And we'll actually pull that back to our hand. Oh, whoops. <laughs> my bad. Coats, my bad. Alright, land in play. Let's take their Connoisseur. And then they're forcing to play and we're having them discard every single turn. Right? So unless they self-sack here, maybe we get a go-ahead. Two cards in their hand. They do have two blood tokens. So, I mean, if they're not using those, it signifies that the, they already have what they want. And they're going to be forced to discard it here in a second. Right? So why wouldn't they have cast it? Unless they're waiting for this to trigger before they draw with the bloods. That, I guess, actually makes a lot of sense. Pretty good steal. Oh, whoa. That's crazy good. Why not? Graveyard to library. I, mean, I really don't want anything here, if I'm being honest. I want it all to stay right where it's at. Typically, this uh, will grab the Harness Infinity if we accidentally mill it. I don't want to discard, so I'm going to play this right now. Right, if they force the discard, I'd be so sad because we just pulled it back. They remove it. They know we want it. Just smart. I mean, we're going to pull it from our grave anyways and just play it that way. Because we should, at a certain point here, have enough mana to do so. Wizard's class is already in play. Yeah, no blocks. Thanks for the creature. There's nothing for them to discard. We do get another blood token, though. And this is cool, right? Put it on the flyer. And then we're discarding the land with the blood for a better draw. We can do that twice before we've cast the castaway. Oh, perfecto. Ran and seven out. Liking that quite a bit. Let's just get the tree token out. Tree folk token. Tree token? I mean, it kind of makes sense. We can swing for nine. And we actually made it through this match uh, fairly successfully. Survived the blood on the snow. We didn't get to uh, get to the combo, but, you know, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. They're kind of taking the uh, initiative. I'm surprised they didn't play that key and look for a field white. Well... But then that takes them down to four. They only have... No, they would have four. They could have pulled the, the field whip. Oh, nice. That does it. That is a dirty spell for sure. They have Death Touch. Uh, we grab another copy here, though, which is pretty brutal. Oh, 
Let's just uh, do a little discard here. See if we can get anything cool. And of course, we're pushing up the boys. Just looking for a harness. Or anything, really. We don't have enough to get them both up. But we're getting them down to one, which is pretty substantial. Of course, it's the land. Do a little Miltskis. We're down to like 18 cards here. That's not great. Land out. And then we swing in. Still block. Uh, they don't want to have this in play since three turns ago. <laughs> Down to one, and, you know, they might field wipe us and have a little bit of a comeback here, but we do have Ren and Seven in play. They're going to discard, look for a blood. Play a Connoisseur again, right? Then they're back in business. They only had one blood token, though, so that's going to be game. Arnus Infinity, where are you? Like, both cop. Oh, one was right on the bottom because we scried it there and didn't reshuffle the whole time. But still, there's another copy in that bottom 18. Bottom 17. On the draw, a few of my favorite things. Wow. So we just want to mill as hard as we can. No mill cards other than Ren and Seven. Could be worse. She's pretty cool. Clerics are brutal. We can mill on three. We can even double drop. But I don't want to... Ritual my ghoul caller, I don't think. Getting voice. Interesting, with some exile there. They're going to take uh, Ludwig. I think we go for it. You know, it's it costs it's costing us one, uh, but it's generating two, which is really cool. So when we do call, one, two, three, four, five mana will be regenerated so far. We need another two. There's one. That takes us to six. They're going to exile Ludwig for sure. They're like, I've never seen that card. It has to go. And it, that's that's good. I mean, it could be in the grave. That'd be better, but... Another treasure. You know, I honestly think we're just chilling. Three, four, five, six, seven. Harness Infinity doesn't do much here, though. We've not had the chance to mill, which is sad. That's uh, summoning's great for us too to take. No blocks. Take the damage. My turn, land out. Ran in seven. Make the tree folk. Or just mill. We prefer not to fight. 
but we also will not hold back. Let's mill. Tree folk would be good here, but that's fine, right? And then at least we're getting something. So we need seven, eight, nine. It looks like we. Well, depends on how much they sacrifice. And if we block, because Ren's going to die if we don't. No, nope, she just dies. Well, she could go down to one. One, two, three, four, five. No blocks. Whatever. It's not great. Land out. We have uh, still a maximum hand size right now, though, right? I'll play one caller. Just gain that life. Keep the other in hand. That's turn. Five. I mean, we're ready to rip. I just want to get all these cards out of their hand before we do it. Holy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I mean, that is enough. What if we just take it, though? No. It's that. It's not that great. Let's just stop the monk. I mean, we'll take eight, whatever. I don't know how much mana we want, and I frankly don't really want to count it out. So we're gonna, we're just gonna push the push the limit here. Land out, <clears throat> calling everything, and hopefully they don't immediately scoop. Right? They might just concede here, but I've got some plans for them if they don't. I mean, they are winning. We're not at five life. Uh, that's nine. They're gonna gain some life here. Blue color out. And then harness infinity. Oh, uh oh! <laughs> yeah, that's a couple cards. Typically, we'd want to have no maximum hand size available, but we, we don't. And uh, we could go Innkeeper, make a treasure, play a one drop. Right, one of these blood fountains can get out there. And then we're discarding nine cards. Fountain. Fountain. One Ren, we have another recovery. Uh, fountain. One Ritual can go, we have another. I like the Innkeepers. Let's get rid of another Bala. Keeper Unseen. We can get rid of one of the Callers. And I guess one of the Innkeepers. Typically that's something we'd like to avoid, but... It happens. I've made my discard. Oh no. Arena. Not again. Not again. F. Starlink has been absolutely brutal today on me. So sad. I don't think it's coming back. No. All right, we're back, but it auto discarded. So there must have been some issue uh, server side. LOL, my bad. And we're getting hit for three. You know, that's not that's not the discard we wanted. Not 
even close to the discard we wanted, but we're going to try to do our best uh, to, tell, to still navigate the rest of this match. Hopefully everything works out. No blocks, down to two. We actually maybe should have killed it. Land. Ren in seven. And then we have five, six. We need five. Uh, so we can do another. That leaves us three, four, five. Yeah. Triple innkeeper, which is actually probably going to keep us in the match here. And then Ren and Seven with the treasures. Grab that triple life gain again, up to eight. Now we swing for two. We can keep on keeping on, I believe. We can grab that innkeeper from the grave if we want. We should be able to survive this turn and... You know, if things get out of control, we have a, a calling ritual. I'm going to kill the land, uh, no matter what. All right, so we're going to lose uh, an innkeeper here. That's okay, though. Exiling from our graveyard is pretty important at this point. We kill the land, and then we don't have to worry about it later. Unless they have removal on the tree folk. Okay, they sack the land, draw two, make a treasure. Innkeeper survives, that's actually ideal. And I'm all about that life gain right now. We get uh, double copies of it, of course, because the Ghoul Caller... We should have played the other Ghoul Caller first. My bad. Right? We could have got three copies of it. And then we're just going to Innkeeper Town. B-E-A. Beautiful. 39 cards uh, still, so that's no problem. We should have plussed first, but I'm pretty sure we just wanted that innkeeper anyways. Oh, we could have got that innkeeper instead. Um, Do they have a field wipe? Maybe. I'm just going to chill out. We can swing for 10 damage here. That's fairly decent. Dispute, and uh, they did that before the block for a little oops there. Sad, 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 sad. End our turn in case they wipe. I don't want to lose the ghoul caller, right? I twitch. If we could double cooler uh, caller with a ren minus eight, that would be fantastic. Land out. Plus up. Let's blood the land away. Looking for something cool. Oh no. We still have maximum hand size right now though, which is frustrating. Um is what it is. <laughs> He's so good. <laughs> Let's just gain a bunch of life, right? Up to 20. Let's blood away the land. Another ritual. That's so tempting. Um. All attack? Let's put on the pressure. Are they going to kill an innkeeper? We'll kill a caller. Well, it's got menace. We'll kill a keeper. 
And then Ren is surviving unless they hard exile. Right? So that should be fine. They get to the learn. They will need to play a creature if they're going to get those exiles off, though. Get Castaway out there. Why not, right? Uh, three cards. Submit zero. Just gain all that life. Nothing there worth taking. I mean, we're just looking for a Wizards class. The Ren minus eight. I feel like the deck's pretty sturdy, right? It's like we don't necessarily even need to get there, which is great. Like a deck that wins before you combo? That's really cool. Nice. That's brutal. Good for them. Let's just keep that plus up. We will help you find safe ground. We can foster much growth here. Mirror Hall Mimic. Our ghost. For three. End our turn. Two creatures from our graveyard to our hand. We probably take those ghoul callers. Right? I mean, we're set up just to while out on people. I really like it. Going first with uh, a couple of my favorite cards in deck here, if I'm being honest. How are we going to get them in play right away, though? I don't, I don't think we will. We're, we're going to be playing a little bit slow here. Or not. That's actually perfect. Let's go! Turn two, Ludwig. A little mill. It just happens to be a disturb card. Now access to the Mirror Hall Mimic for five, which is great. We immediately lose our boy. That's all right though, because we're coming at you with the run steam ramping, which is nice. I'm just gonna take it. Maybe we can transform and start to deal a bit of damage. No. We get the transform, which is great. Uh, a little less than we wanted, but... Let's just cast away in Butler. Not great. Get that mill going. Hit for three. A little bit worried about all their removal. We just have a ton of fodder here. We could make copies of the butler, and then when it dies, we're grabbing, you know, Ludwig back. We're grabbing uh, Rutstein back. That'll be acceptable, right? We lose the Hulk. Flash the Sprout. Whoa! Holy removal. One, two, three, four removal spells in a row. Man, you crazy. Let's just fold out again. Losing a couple good cards there. That's my bad. Oh, we only have one black source. We should be... Uh, Mindful of that, I guess. That's good, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. Wish we had that fifth land. This is a 7-3 that's so good against us. If we had that land, we could just start making copies of the scavenger. That would be sick. Oh well. Maybe we'll still get it. But then they'd have removal immediately, right? Or they get to remove their own scavenger. 
Just seems weird. The black source. And I do think that's just our only choice. Unless they're willing to kill their own scavenger. Which, again, kind of saves us the pain of dealing with it. I'd assume they just hold their removal and kill our copies. Still getting hit for 7 is a minimum here. We hit for 2 though, let's go! We need a third black source. And then a third green source. Maybe they kill it now? After the hit? It's guaranteed there's more removal in their hand, right? They're thinking it through, right? They don't really want to give us the scavenger, but at the same time... If they kill it, they have lethal. Lantern in play. Force the sack right now. Nice. Good on them. They do force sacrifice themselves. Get that third blue source. Uh, sorry, black source. Now we're just looking for a green source. Need that ghoul caller. We will be sacrificing the butlers. Uh, that brings more creatures back. I don't really mind. And then if we need, we can, uh, be discarding, right? I'll just send it back to the grave. Then we can keep hitting for that one extra damage. Oh, another scavenger in play, you dog. Okay, so we still need a green source. Well, no, this black took, so we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. Let's get in front of this thing. We need that butler, and then we can infinity. I honestly need nothing because I want to infinity them back at this point. We'll even go as far as putting more in there. Right, we do have the Wizards class, uh, which is important. No attacks. One, two, it says seven, right? Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oof. So we need uh, more land. Oh, that was on our end step. Nice. Do they have more removal? If they do, it's lethal. Nice! Holy Toledo is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven removal spells in a row. Whoa! <laughs> All right, going first. Uh, innkeeper's there. Caller's there. A recovery is there. So let's recovery first. This is a black source. This is our single blue. Sp oh, and then there's our. Hmm. Still needs to be black sourced. Worst case, the treasure can uh, fill a gap if we need. Yeah, 
Interesting. Ours would enter as a zero zero though, right? Get these uh, butlers in play, gain some life, do some mill. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, we want those cards. Let's get the uh, glue collar out as well. Need some life, no attacks. We want the butler to die. Divine Gecko. This is an interesting kicker deck. Land out. Mimic the ghoul caller. Gain the life. No attacks. I'd rather defend with it, I guess. Because they could just let the one damage through. And, you know, that's not very threatening. We just lose our blocker that does a bunch of stuff for us, right? There are legendary cards into our hand, which isn't the greatest, but certainly will help. Woof! They remove counters for the kick spell, and we are active here with some 2-2 two -two flyers. Wow. Get that mill going on again. Gain the life. Hmm. Not the greatest. I'll attack with one butler. They just, yeah, they let it through. That's smart. We're looking for a harness infinity. Hit for four, down to 20. Land. We do get five damage through here. They have menace. Unless they're kicking a spell for a second blocker. Ooh, I never thought of that. Never thought of that, Maya. Why didn't you tell me? Instant speed. Instant speed kickers, dad. Land and play is a black source. End our turn. Inscription gets kicked. Holy Kalitos. They're gonna kill the innkeeper. They have a lot of firepower here, right? This is a... This is a big hit. They won't kill the butler. What a jerk. Whatever. Let's wipe. If we don't wipe, we're dead. So, that's what's happening. We'll just restart. I mean, there's nothing to cast here either, which is sad. Well, I guess we do get a couple things, right? Because these butlers go to our hand. Action. And we want... Probably Rutstein. And then who's that second creature we want? The Mimic, the Ghoul Caller, or the Innkeeper? Like, we're low on life. I feel like the Innkeeper would be best. And then we copy our Innkeeper, right? That'll make it things a little bit easier for us. And then we just fold out. Gain some life. Do the mail skis. Land. Makes a treasure. And then the sprout. Out. And turn. Cool beans, cool beans. They have four cards in hand. Let's see how this ends up for us. Maya has left the studio. Oof, we get bounced. Which means our... Mirror Hall Mimic goes to exile because it leaves the battlefield as a disturbed card. They have five cards in hand. Bubble Snare on the Sprout. Meh, whatever. It taps. We mill, make a treasure, mill another land. Innkeeper out. 
glue collar out on top. Hit for one. Let's go. <laughs> well, Bubble Snare is great because it has the kicker and the kicker deck, right? A fairly even game, right? We have field advantage. They have hand advantage. Harness Infinity would be so sick. Even milling a wizard's class so we get it later. Uh oh. Now that is definitely a card. The draw two here is pretty deadly. You're wasting your time. Very nice. Your tiny mind couldn't possibly grasp my uh, one into our library. I mean the innkeeper's just so much cheaper to play right now. Maya, you're too big. You're in the way. We're going to shrink you down. I get a nice big hit in here, I believe. Down to seven. The deck is feeling, you know, fairly decent, at least in the play queue. Good game. Beep, boop, bop. For the refresher. On the draw... Well, it doesn't look bad. It doesn't look great, though. We're, there's no green source here. But we can use the blood token to discard to find that green source. And that should be alright. The Sprout. I use that card. Make that blood token. Hopefully we can find our way to a calling ritual. We need a green source, though, as well. Which we might just play as recovery, right? Exodermist is a land ramp. That's pretty good. Very good in this deck, actually. That's something that we might consider running. Yeah, green source in play. Two damage, that's fine. Uh, it doesn't look like they're ramping with the Taxidermis since it's tapped, so they just play land and tapped. Take the Scry, I'm assuming. Yeah, it goes to the bottom. That signifies they didn't find anything they wanted. Three cards in hand to end of their turn. Mana up for instant speed interaction. No, it's another reclusive Taxidermist. I will take our turn, leave the blood token there. Land in play, innkeeper out. Make the treasure. I mean, at this point, one, two, three, four. I'm going to keep that and drop a ren next turn. Let's pass. We could blood uh, token that ren out, looking for a culling ritual. Geist of Regret. Uh-oh. This is one of my favorite cards. One of my favorite cards. And they get Croaking Counterpart. Nice. We're in trouble. We are definitely in trouble. We're not casting anything from the grave, though. I think we're just screwed here. You notice how we cannot draw anything but random sevens? So this is worrisome. Really worrisome. I like it, though. Geist of Regret is one of my favorite cards. They go with the Blessing. Taps both of our creatures, right? They get plus one counters as well. And uh, random seven dies. 
This is a nice copy here as well. Simic Geist might be something that we could take a look at for sure. I was not expecting this. Very cool. Sometimes playing in the play key is worthwhile. Croaking counterparts on the Geist of Regret is goofy. It's the silliest thing I've ever seen in my life. I love it. It's one of my favorites. Ren dies, and we get hit for 5. 13. Must regenerate. Land out. You know, that same thing is going to uh, basically happen, but worse. Let's just keep after it. The entire forest is in awe. The life gain's nice. They do transform. A 5-5 five, five now. Holy Toledos. They have 5 mana up. Croaking Counterpart on the Geist. It copies itself. Yikes. They grab another Winterhorn Blessing. Which is very good technique here. I'm really uh, liking that. I really like it. Just straight up nice. That's cool stuff. This is a, a good deck. Well, I don't know about all of it in here, but um, it is working. A couple things seem questionable, but at the end of the day, look at the work it's putting in. Oh no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But they still have the Geist, which is really good, and it's just going to kill us. Take our five. Oh, the frogs have five mana. Frogs have five mana. They're not one one. To they're not like uh, zero mana tokens. They hold that mana value, which is pretty crazy. Crazy indeed. And these all get copied multiple times. That's really cool. You know, Geist of Regret and this Croaking Counterpart. So cool, and then adding the Winterhorn Blessing to that, I think is fairly decent, right? I'd love to see some counter magic in this deck as well. And then you're you're off to the races. That's a really cool deck, like, good game a million times over. I absolutely love that. Holy Toledos. I had no idea that this would work uh, so effectively, at least within the play queue. I do think that we could make the deck a little bit better and take it into the rank queue. However, maybe more wizards class because it would suck to have to discard your hand or have something that benefits from the massive discard right because getting that emblem with no maximum hand size is harder said than done and a massive shout out to web death from the community for uh kind of lifting my nose to the veteran ghoul caller in harness infinity a fantastic synergy that i do think has enough support to really actually maybe make a competitive deck out of so let me know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments and boy oh boy it's card of the day you may have seen what it is already and it's actually in deck this is a murk water slash clear water pathway um and that's pretty cool if we jump into some stuff about it uh we first have the artist uh Darken, pardon my pronunciation, you know, I can't, I just look at pictures, which is why I love the art. So you can get in, uh, go through their gallery and a bunch of stuff here, check out the website, uh, which is really cool if you want to give it a little googlies, it'll be the first thing that comes up. And then we also have the uh, history on pathways, right? So pathways, believe it or not, are something that's brand new uh, to magic, introduced first within, call, uh, actually Zendikar Rising, and then again in call time to finish the set which is really cool you know we've always had dual lands but nothing like the pathways which is fantastic and i'd love to know your thoughts and opinions on the pathways to try to make land a little bit friendlier and the mana base i should say within magic we also do have uh, a little bit of info on it here uh it's a six dollar card believe it or not and that's because it's it's really required 
in most decks and uh, the foil going as high as seven which is pretty cool and uh, of course thanks to titan shield we do have the appropriate protection on our cards and they're going to keep that intrinsic value and maybe even go up in price as time goes on so definitely check them out link in the link tree to get 15% uh, off on all those protection products cool beans then you can abuse your cards right you just toss them around do not throw this at someone. You will like gash their face open. This is heavy duty, you guys. Um, so with that being said, you know, massive shout out to everybody supporting the channel. Let me know what you thought of the deck, or no, sorry, card of the day in the comments below. You know, just something that I've been trying to do to help the sponsor out and, you know, maybe entertain you guys with some of my paper collection because we could literally do this every single day. With that being said, if you missed yesterday's video, I'll have a link of it pinned in the comments below. Do not miss out on this guys you definitely want to check that out and more importantly than everything have a magical day make sure to like the video to show your support and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of me on your youtube feed bye bye